patreon.com slash the walk off podcast uh four dollars a month gets you in there well holy cow buddy i take off in about five six hours here to the other side of the world hello and welcome to the walk off everybody i'm scott belford joined as always by the best co-host in the biz adam mack so this is what's happening in my life right now is i'm about to fly to africa okay so i'm getting married in namibia my fiance and i went there back in 2017 fell in love with the place thought hey let's elope here if we get the chance then a pandemic hit. So that got pushed over, right? But we're finally getting that done. I'm getting married January 28th, honeymooning until the 16th of February. I'm going to do my best here. I know Adam and I have talked about this, trying to do a mailbag. It's 10 hours ahead. So it's going to take some real massaging for Adam and I to pull that off, but we're hopefully going to do it. We have good friend of the show, Craig Ballard, who's going to join Adam every Monday while I'm away. And of course, Garth Yorgi, Long toss season vet coming on on all the Friday shows. Uh, I know that Adam's going to do an interview or two as well. And we'll be releasing all the interviews that we did over the last uh, week and a half. It has been a crazy week for interviews, eh, buddy? Like what, two a day pretty much? I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been great. It's so, it's so weird. Like honestly, mentally burned out everybody. You would think that just two guys who love baseball sitting around and talking baseball with people who also love baseball for a week straight would be a dream. And it was, but oh boy, that's a lot. <laughs> Bit of a slog. Yeah, for sure. Bit of a slog. But we have some amazing guests coming out. Robert Bernardo, he's the head of the mental performance department. His interview was absolutely incredible. We sat down and talked with Hag and Danner, Haggy D. Probably going to make his major league debut this year. We yep. chatted with him yesterday, starting catcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. Danny Jansen was on the show yesterday, so we're going to get a clip out today of that. Uh, yeah, honestly, the list of folks that we have talked to over the last little bit is pretty mind-blowing, and those are all going to be, re be released over the next month. And of course, if you want to jump the gun, if you don't want to wait for any of that, feel free to join Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the walk-off podcast. All right, buddy, let's get into it because we do have a busy busy show we got lots to talk about before we do that though i don't know if you want to throw up this picture of evan longoria of course sure. he signed with the arizona diamondbacks uh this off season and i don't know what it is he just looks like old tim Mesa to me in this in this picture like i triple took the photo i was like is that tim Mesa with like age on him you're <laughs> crazy that does not look like old tim Mesa. maybe young tim Mesa. <laughs> you're like tim Mesa looks like old tim Mesa. <laughs> yeah we got pictures of tim Mesa here too so you let us know in the comments is evan longoria old tim Mesa or young tim Mesa? <laughs> <laughs> all right let's let's get to let's, let's get into it okay so we're gonna tackle along elt made an appearance on tsn radio and made a quote that has ruffled some feathers in Blue Jays' land, so we'll delve into that. David Phelps, veteran reliever, announced retirement, so we'll do a little salute to him. Rogers Reno's looking pretty cool. We'll take a look at what they're up to there. Baseball America has announced their top 100 list for prospects. How many Blue Jays are in it? How many Blue Jays could be in it come the midseason reevaluation? of the list so we'll talk that Rymel Tapia the former fourth outfielder for the Blue Jays now going to be donning a Red Sox uniform and finally we're going to end the show with a little story of mine let's get into it all right Rogers Reynolds by the way great name for a small independent renovation company yes Rogers Roger. Reynolds find us on Kijiji <laughs> all right look after your renos <laughs> all right brandon belt uh fans in a tizzy over this one scott man it is so funny it is so funny especially when you think about how we as fans sometimes make fun of players for being superstitious but let's be serious there are very superstitious fans as well so if you missed it brandon belt made an appearance on TSN radio the other day. And he was quoted as saying, we should be considered World Series favorites. Now, this 
upset folks who remembered getting all excited about the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. quote at the beginning of last season. Last year was the trailer. This year is the movie. And of course, then that was rubbed in all of our faces by every other fan base across Major League Baseball at the end of the season. And it hurt, right? Nothing like Yankees fans rubbing that in your face and you're being like, oh man, it would have been so sweet if it went the other way, but it sure didn't. Come on. It's almost like a protect yourself type of idea, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you was... did you hear the did you hear the interview, Adam? No, I didn't. So I did. And I just wish everyone who didn't hear the interview to understand that this quote was taken a little bit out of context because basically he was asked what he felt of this new look Blue Jays team. And he was more or less like, I'm excited to be a part of it. It's going to be a really good team. I've been a part of championship teams and this team has the makeup to be a championship team. We should be considered World Series favorites. But when you just take that last thing he said, it comes across as very uh, verbose, right? It becomes very overconfident, if you will. Mm -hmm. And you start to feel like, oh, dear God, are the baseball gods being taunted again, right? <laughs> like, yeah, the, the way you're describing it, it does sound like his statement is more defensive than, than anything, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, we are, we're a good team. Don't forget about us. And I love that. Honestly, I'm kind of the odd man out on this quote because I personally was like, yeah, like we should be considered World Series champions or uh, favorites. I mean, like world should should being the big word here. And I think even when he said favorites, he really was more leaning towards contenders, right? Like, obviously, this Toronto Blue Jays team is isn't the number one favorite in all of baseball to win the World Series, but it's a very good team. You I know, know what? That... It's a matter of sample size, Scott. If you're looking at Dodgers, Astros, Yankees, Blue Jays, Braves, are we one of the favorites of that bunch? No, probably not. But if you look at all 30 teams, and you're going, who yeah, are the favorites? We are. Yeah, we're one of the favorites for sure. We're a top <laughs> six contender for the World Series. Yeah, we're one of the favorites to win. I would love to hear all of your comments on this. Feel free to drop those here or DM us if you want to really get into it. You can do so on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast and Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. But what do you think? Do you wish Brandon Belt hadn't said this? Or do you more wish that this little snippet hadn't been taken out of context? Or do you care? Or do you love it? You know, because there's there's... Many different sides to this, but I, I really do feel like uh, Blue Jays fans are blowing this up out of proportion just a little bit because we remember Vladdy running around Rogers Center screaming, this is my house, and how much that came back to bite us too, right? So like these, these confident exclamations in the heat of the moment have hurt us in the past that it just uh, <laughs> brought up bad memories. I hey, think, you know, last year about. it was the... Uh... Hey, that was the trailer. This year's the movie kind of thing. Well, I don't know. All my favorite franchises. Number two is always the best movie, right? Terminator 2, the best Terminator, right? The Dark Knight, way better than Batman Begins. Caddyshack 2, way better than Caddyshack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's Reel it in, here. Scott. Reel it in. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's move along here to the fact that just a few days ago, David Phelps, announced his retirement better relievers in this blue chase bullpen last year he had a very very successful under the radar showing for this toronto blue jays organization of course he was a part of this team in 2021 as well pitched really well in april part of the reason the bullpen wheels fell off in 2021 was that david phelps wound up getting injured which allowed tyler chatwood much more pitching time, and we all are aware of where that went. But if you look at David Phelps's numbers last year, man, shockingly good. 65 games he appeared in. An ERA under three, 2.83 ERA, nine Ks per nine innings. I mean, what a way to go out 
10-year career, a decade in Major League Baseball. This is a feat done by very, very few players. So a real a accomplishment. Tip of the hat, an unreal accomplishment for David Phelps. And he struggled to stay healthy at the end of his career. And it's very cool that he managed to get such a successful full season in. And it was just like, you know what? Let's go out like this. Because absolutely he could have found a job after those numbers last year. If that is what oh, he yeah. wished to do at 36 years old. But you know what? All the best to him. I, I wish him all the success in, in retirement and in enjoying his family time and whatever he decides to take as his next step. But yeah, you know David what? Phelps. It kind of reminds me, I was just looking at the picture of him here. Kind of looks like a old Tim Mesa. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm done. I'm done. All right, thank you for the great season, uh, Mr. Phelps. Uh, absolute journeyman of a career. Uh, you don't pitch 10 years in the show with an ERA under four and not be mm-hmm. uh, an absolute gem of a guy. So, And he kind of bookended his career nicely. Rookie season, he went to the playoffs with the Yankees. Final season, went to the playoffs with the Blue Jays. Didn't see a sniff of the playoffs in those eight years in between. So there you go. They released some pictures over this last week and it is looking like a completely different building. I'm actually getting pretty excited about it. There's some things they're doing. I'm not the biggest fan of hiring the walls or that's probably the wrong way of, of, of phrasing H- that high hiring the walls hiring like 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 make it go wider making, up. Making them making them go higher. Yeah. Not hiring them. <laughs> make like, it go make it go wider. You've up. got yourself a job, walls. No. <laughs> hiring them. <laughs> raising. Lifting. Raising. Raising Inbigening. the walls. All right. Raise the walls. Oh yeah, look at us go. We're so hip, Scott. All right. Yeah, what walls doing, going up. Walls also coming in. Bullpen. Yes, they are. So we are going to probably see, especially Dalton Lar show is probably going to be the big winner in the walls coming in on that right field. White right field, bringing the walls in lefty bat hits a lot of his homers to right field. So it only stems to reason that this should be good for him. Uh, if you look at some of the things they've done too, when it comes to the fan experience, it's pretty darn cool. They've completely torn out that WestJet flight deck and redone that. They've added some bars to there, a Corona rooftop patio that overlooks the field. They've done complete renovation of the seats in the 500 section. And I don't know if you ever saw a game at Rogers Center, Adam, but one of the more frustrating things about the 500s is that the seats as you go around the stadium are all facing literally straight ahead. And a lot of this had to do with the fact that the Argonauts used to play there. So they used to need to kind of set it up for a football stadium Mm -hmm. as well. But now they're going full in baseball. They're turning the seats so that you're not constantly cracking your neck. You know, it's for the old guys like myself. And I look forward to it. Although, you know, one thing that bothered me, buddy, Mm. and I don't know if this is for sure or not, I did not see cup holders in those new seats. I know. I, that's what I was looking at, too. I thought, oh, Scott's not going to be happy with this. No. Uh, it's literally the thing I wanted the most. I could have given a shit about almost everything else. I'm like, give me a place to put my beer. It's the entire reason we started this podcast. It was plan one, <laughs> gain notoriety. Yeah. Step two, talk to the guys in Toronto. Step three, cup holders for the fans on behalf of in Scott. In the 500 section. Exactly. I'm really going to um, be interested to see how this affects the play on the field, though, because they are just making enough tweaks. You know what? This is going to change some stuff. Scott, this actually feels like a bit of a slap in the face directly at you and me. Mm -hmm. What were the two things each of us cared about? You wanted cup holders for the five holders. What did I want? Lower walls. What do they do? Brand new seats. They they spent the money on the seats just to rub it in. No cup holders. No couple. What did they do for me? Did they bring the walls lower for home run robbing catches? Let's no, raise them raise up, them. they said. Let's raise them. <laughs> yeah, this feels like an attack. No stealing home runs. Absolutely not. No. Wow. 
this is one thing that you have talked about a lot. It's one of Adam's favorite things about the game of baseball is somebody doing something incredible and then being robbed by it by somebody else doing something even more incredible. Yeah. We all like we all remember that Kevin Park Kevin Pilar ca- catch in left yes. field. It's one of the most incredible catches at Rogers Center his, in Rogers Center history, I think it's safe to say. Sure. And it, it lives on in folklore. And it would just be so fun to have more of that. <laughs> just okay like there are like the green monster sure can exist it is its own thing it's its own entity i'm not saying we need seven foot green monster in left field there in boston but generally speaking why would you have a 10 foot wall where even if a guy makes a, a leaping effort to take a ball away it still only would have been a double off the top of the wall as opposed mm-hmm. to if his arm is above the wall it's a home run robbing catch that is a a way better play. It's the same thing happens. It's just the environment was different. So the result would have been different. It's a frustration, man. I wonder how much analytical studies, like the study of the analytics of how the this Blue Jays team plays and what these little tweaks could do for this team went into this. Or if this is kind of irrelevant. I have to, I would have to think that it's got to be a question that gets asked and then is immediately shot down because these, unless it is a modular stadium where they're going to adjust the wall height or the outfield depth season by season, like there's no point spending a hundred million dollars on a, on this outfield configuration. And then two years from now, it's, the exact opposite of what we would want based on the 2025's roster construction, right? So, yeah, which is a very good point. So, yeah, that's probably irrelevant then, but it is going to be fun for the fans with these raised bullpens, man. Can you imagine just leaning over being eight feet from... Name a Yankee reliever. (laughs) I was going to go with old Tim Mesa. But yeah, <laughs> uh, it would be nice though to just lean in and just be like, "Hey, Michael King, you suck. <laughs> you reek you of know. beef and cheese." Yeah, <laughs> more like Michael Prince. Am I right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on from there. <laughs> yeah, let's move on from there and let's talk prospects. For a little bit here. I'm Ball America just released their top 100 prospects going in to the 2023 season. Now, how many Toronto Blue Jays are in this top 100? I'm going to tell you right now, it's only one. So we just watched Gabriel Moreno get traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Gabriel Moreno was actually all the way up to the number three prospect in all of baseball when he was moved. But it does kick one of those Toronto Blue Jays out of that top 100 that there was. So I think we all know who is the Toronto Blue Jays in the top 100. Of course, he's the Blue Jays' number one prospect. Ricky Tiedemann, 19-year-old left-hander. Well, and the way that the show notes were sent to me, I didn't realize this was going to be a big reveal. So I just put Ricky Tiedemann on the overlay this morning. So Love it. There was definitely no buildup or tension or surprise as for anybody, I gave that for anybody spiel. watching as you gave that <laughs> spiel because literally it's Ricky Tiedemann highlighted in red on the screen right now. So the good news for all you audio folks is, oh boy, wasn't that reveal fun? Ooh, oh, tense. baby. <laughs> Who could it be? Could it be? <laughs> <laughs> so Ricky Tiedemann comes in at the number 31 spot, 19-year-old left-handed pitcher, finished last year. With was it Triple A Buffalo he wound up pitching in for the last couple games there, or was it the Double uh, A? It was New Hampshire Fisher at the end. Cats. of the It year. was the Fisher Cats at the end of the year. Okay, so he so, he finished the season uh, with Double A. I think we are going to see him obviously in Triple A, probably right out of the gate. I think they're going to test his metal, just see where he's at, how he handles obstacles. This is one of the biggest things with development in young players, right? Is just seeing how they deal with failure. This was a really interesting thing. We talked to Robert DiBernardo, head of the mental performance department with the Toronto Blue Jays, and he really talked a lot about being able to take failures and 
turn them into teachable moments to allow you to continue to build a base for future wins. And so when it comes to development, this is what they want to see these kids doing, right? I know that when we had Taylor Sacedo on the show, this was one thing he brought up. He was with that New Hampshire Fisher Cats team that won it all back in 2018 with literally almost everyone that was a core member of this Blue Jays team last year. Lourdes was on that team, Vladdy and Biggio and Bo. And I mean, the list goes on and on of members, uh, big league members. And that's one of the things we talked about in that Sacedo interview, by the way when we released that is how many big leaguers wound up being on that 2018 team. But anyways, what Sacedo was saying was that he had a moment where he literally melted down. He flipped out. He was throwing his glove. He was pouting. He was frustrated. And John Schneider manager of that Fisher cats team waited, let him calm down and then came up to him and was like, Hey sauce, we need you to come into the office here for a second. And basically it was like, listen, man, you know, you are one of our favorites. You always put in the effort. But if you do shit like that again, we're going to need to cut you. There's no place on this in this organization for that kind of behavior. And so the next day, Sauce came into the dressing room. He apologized to the entire team. And it was funny. He talked about Jordan Romano also on that team, right? And he never minces his words, as, as Sauce says. So he comes up to him and he was like, man, by the way, like, thanks for apologizing. But God, you were a baby last (laughs) last night just a baby so this is the thing right when it comes to these young kids it's important to see how they react to getting pulled how they react to getting blown up how they react to failure and if they do react in a in a way that doesn't fit in with the culture of the team it allows the coaches it allows these these guys within the organization that are there to teach and help build these young men up to take them aside and be like, listen, this is not how we would like to see this play out. So I think Ricky Tiedemann starting in AAA is going to be excellent for him. Now, yes, there was only one guy in this top 100 for Baseball America. However, there are truly four more prospects in this Blue Jays system that we very well could see in the top 100 come their July release midseason. So now that you who are watching on YouTube don't have all these four names up in front of you. There is a reveal here. Look at this, Adam. There is a reveal coming. Yes. So let's talk the other big left-handed pitcher. He was taken in the first round by the Blue Jays last year. Brandon Barriera. This kid is 18 year olds old, Adam. I, he actually doesn't turn 19 until March. So he's just a baby but he's probably going to get some time in the Florida state league. And my guess is they're going to try to get him to Vancouver as quickly as possible. He may wind up staying in Vancouver, very similar to um, Kloffenstein, Adam Kloffenstein for a couple of years. You never know how these guys are going to develop. However, a ton of hype around Barriera and he very well with a good performance could wind up in that top 100. Another guy to keep an eye on is going to be Addison Barger. Now, what would stop Addison Barger from making this top 100 list would be if he makes the Blue Jays out of spring training. That wasn't my guess. My guess was a a high ransom kidnapping. (laughs) Okay, so let's clarify. Both of those would prevent him from... Fingers crossed for neither one. Yes, exactly. Well, fingers crossed he makes the team. That'd be cool for him, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but if we got to call in Liam Neeson to, you know. <laughs> go find Addison Barger. Four. Yeah. There you go. So Addison Barger, he plays shortstop. He plays second base. He plays third base. He's very versatile. He's got a little time in left field. And he's on the 40-man roster. With a really good showing in AAA, I think he could break into that top 100 in baseball America, but it is likely that due to a bad taco or two, he gets called up to the blue Jays. And with a good showing on the Jays, I think they keep him around. Well, we have talked to people much wiser than us, uh, who feel very strongly that Addison Barger could be a contributing blue ready. Jay yeah. right away. So mm-hmm. I do think, uh, 
spring training is going to be a big factor for him. Uh, we'll see what kind of conditioning he shows up in. I, you have to assume it's going to be good. Um, if he plays hot, I mean, we saw guys have big spring trainings before uh, that really impacted their role. Put them on the, I don't want to say on the radar, but like a guy like Josh Palacios. Yes. The show, by the way, who wasn't necessarily even a name being thrown around as a guy who could be the up and down fifth outfielder for the Blue Jays, but had a massive spring training. And yes. all of a sudden it was like, hey, maybe this guy just took some big steps in the offseason uh, and, and looks ready now. So it kind of comes out of nowhere. That's a great example, Adam. That's a great example, of course. So I'm all think- the best to Josh Palacio as he is a major leaguer now in Washington, which yeah. is very cool. So I think uh, a preseason, a spring training like that from Addison Barger could go a long way to just securing his spot on this team. Of course, Alec Manoa, we remember too, his rookie season. Uh, most Blue Jays fans had never even heard of him until mm-hmm. he started throwing and dominantly in spring training, right? And then all of a sudden it was like, oh shit, is, it, is this guy going to just make the yeah. team? And of course they decided, no, let's send him down to AAA for a bit, but it wasn't long. And uh, Alec Manoa has got to be one of the most interesting kind of asterisk names you could possibly mention just with that COVID season being canceled. And he had pitched so little in 2019 and then 2021 came along and he just literally dominated from the moment he stepped on that main minor league mound in triple a he wasn't even supposed to start the season in triple a mm-hmm. like i remember when they were talking about calling him up both you and i adam were like don't do it <laughs> like yeah. oh my goodness like his development is going so well like he's only got whatever it was 70 innings of pro ball you under know what his belt. can i say something and this is maybe uh me showing how much of a bozo i am i still stand by that take I think that the risk, like we gambled by bringing him up mm. when we did. And of course it has worked out. Oh yeah. But I wouldn't have it any a other way now. 99% but... long shot is still a bad idea. Most of <laughs> even the time. If it like, works out. Yeah. Even if it works out. It just <laughs> felt like it was a, a long shot out of, that we didn't need to take. It was just mm. risky. That I don't know. Anyways, I'm glad it worked out. But. Me too. And it, it did open my eyes to, oh yeah, I forgot. Of course, the Blue Jays brass knows more about what's going on with the development of a player than we do. But I still I it was a good you. reminder, wasn't it? Right. It's like, oh yeah, we're idiots. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess that's why we're not getting cup holders in the five hundreds. <laughs> so speaking of guys, of course, Addison Barger and Brandon Barriera are two of the four who could very well find their way into that top 100 come the uh, mid-season reevaluation by Baseball America. Another guy who the only thing that probably could could stop him from getting into that top 100 if he has a really good beginning of the minor league season would be Yasfer Zulueta, and that would be him getting called up as well. Zulueta, of course, is a flame-throwing Cuban who has struggled to stay healthy since they picked him up in the free agent um, or the international free agency mm-hmm. three years ago, I think it was. They picked him up as a 19-year-old. He's 23 now, but he literally has not been able to stay on the field. And there's been a lot of hype about this guy from time to time because sorry, he has age such... age correction here. He's 24, yes. and it's just 24. worth pointing out because his birthday is in three days, so he will. He's essentially 25. Okay, good to know. Thank you for that, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so 25 years old. So this is a guy who's probably going to make this Blue Jays team this year, if not out of spring training. I think we are going to see him make his major league debut. He very well could wind up in the top 100 prospects. But again, at 25 and with the arm on him, I think it's more likely he makes his debut with the Blue Jays. This is, I know we've talked about it before and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but this triple A pitching depth that the Blue Jays have uh, brewing down in Buffalo Mm -hmm. is something we have not had in a long time. Yeah. And that is a... (sighs) You just can't understate the value of that in a year that you intend to go all the way or go a long way. 
because there are going to be bad tacos. There are going to be slumps. There are going to be situations. There are going to be trade opportunities Mm -hmm. where having a guy who can throw 99 and touch 101, that's a valuable trade piece. Even if he's not pitching for the Jays can contribute in other ways. If we, you know, do need to go out and add a, a second baseman or a left fielder or whatever the case may be. Insular depth has been an Achilles heel of this team for the Great last Great word, by years. the way. Vocab, your vocab is very impressive right now. Insular Thank depth. You. Yes. Good job. Well, it's, uh, I'll, I'll make that up later in the show where okay. I can't remember should or something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry to throw a, a wrench right in the, the tires. No, now. but... Uh, Listen, Insular it depth. is exciting. It is exciting to look at this Blue Jays Buffalo Bison team and see five guys in the Fernandezes, right? The Fernandez Bonanza the, is back. The Fernandez there. five, as we call them. <laughs> I know there's only two of them. But. Junior and Julian. You got Big Nate. You got Haggy D. And you got Yasser Zulueta. All of them have hit triple digits. This is something the Blue Jays did not have even one year ago, man. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty exciting to see that there is the opportunity here that if there is a bad taco, if there is something that happens, that one of these guys gets up and can run with it. And this is how bullpens are built, man. This is how you get those Felix Batistas that Baltimore all of a sudden had last year, right? It's just somebody gets given an opportunity and runs with it. And all five of those guys have big arms and could be high leverage dudes. Well, and that's not even to mention the other guys like, like Matt Gage. Yes. Another show, Matt Gage. Uh, we should have him back, by the way. The we guy. should have Matt Gage back. Uh, pitched really well for the Blue Jays last year. Really well. Uh, just put one up his numbers here. 11 games, ERA of 1.38 with a whip of 0.923. Mm-hmm. The only thing that kept him off this lineup, he had options. Had options. So with asset management, they decided to go with a pen full of right-handers. But this is the closer in Buffalo. Yeah, he right? is. So he's pitching leverage innings down in Buffalo. Lefty. This is something the bullpen lacks, right? We have Tim Meza, mm-hmm. also known as old Evan Longoria. <laughs> people watching this on clips have no idea the references we're making right now by the way yes um, callbacks are no good with clips <laughs> no no callbacks from and before clips. they're like there was no before <laughs> there was no before good morning um yeah I, I think matt gage could be another big contributor this year too and like a unsexy name that's definitely worth keeping an eye on Another name worth keeping an eye on is Adrian Hernandez, who Heggy D brought up mm-hmm. yesterday because I was asking him about is there because we were talking about how when it comes to comedians, one of the things that I respect the most is a comic doing something on stage that I just couldn't do. I just, you know, for whatever reason, it's not my style or my skill set. You know, one liners is what came to mind. Just the guys who can go on stage with, you know, 200 jokes in 10 mm-hmm. minutes and just oh, like. Yeah. You know, so the Sammy Ray Bentes of the world. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Who on that in this Blue Jays organization, we asked Haggy has pitches that you're like, geez, what I would give to be able to do that. And Adrian Hernandez is who we brought up because he said that his his change up looks like a left handed curveball. He's like the spin on it from a right hander is so um difficult to pick up because it's almost doing the opposite of what every other changeup is doing. Mm-hmm. So he was like, my God, like the kid, he he told a story about uh him being taken long. And he comes <laughs> into the to the dugout and he's just laughing. And Haggy's like, you never see people laughing after they give up a long ball and he just throws his glove down. He's like, damn it, this is why I never throw fastballs. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> right? Pretty much. Okay. So the final prospect within this Blue Jays system that very well could take a step forward and make his way into this top 100 Baseball America list come July. And this is a long shot, but it is 21-year-old Cade Doughty, who was taken in the second round last year. He plays 
Um, played a little bit with the Florida State League last year. My guess is they're going to attempt to get him to Vancouver and get him get him hitting against a little bit higher quality pitching this year. Mm-hmm. And so I think if we see him take a step forward with his development and continue to progress like he has, because he took major steps forward in the Florida State League for someone who was just drafted at a young kid, right? Uh, so yeah, Cade Dowdy's another guy to keep an eye on second baseman and very well could, if not even this off season, uh, this mid season one, we could see him crack that top 100 come 2024. I love it. Okay. Anything else prospect wise you want to bring up here before we bring in, go on to Rymel? No, I just, uh, we did get some comments on the international, uh, free agent signing that we did. Uh, what's his name? Benia. Yes. Not not That's Bobby. Emmanuel Bonilla. Emmanuel yes. Bonilla. Um just want to remind people, I know he's 16 and they're like, "Well, why are we doing this? This isn't going to help us for a decade." Right? But that's kind of the point. Yes. Is that you need to plant the seed today so you can eat the fruit tomorrow as Di Bernardo tells us. Mm-hmm. Uh this is just part of having a sustained competitive window or whatever you want to call it ultimately and it's uh it's a never-ending thing so when you see a guy like uh barriera and we're excited about him and it's like yeah this we're not excited about him because he's going to help us win this year or even next year or even the year after that but this is a guy who if he continues to develop and can turn into that next wave of starting pitchers right these are the guys that we need to replace kevin gossman with in a few years that is such a good point adam that is such a good point is look at the contracts of the starting pitchers currently on this roster and that's probably the timeline that you're looking for ricky tiedemann excluded obviously because he's such a talent but even if brandon barriera takes a huge step forward right like he's 18 he's got zero innings under his belt and i mean look knock on wood joe woodhead here but God forbid Alec Manoa leaves in free agency, right? Having a guy like Brandon Barriera or whoever the next one is, Adam Kloffenstein or CJ Van Eyck or any of these young guys who turn into something, it can take the sting off of mm-hmm. losing a guy like that when you go, oh, thank God we have Sam Burst just dominating right now. Yes for free on that rookie contract, you know? So it's prospects yeah, and so they're the stars of tomorrow. Prospects, I, I, it's so funny too, because there are baseball fans who get so tired of hearing about prospects and they just don't wish to hear about it. And I get that sentiment, but it is all about the building blocks of, of a perennial championship team, or at least a contending team, right? Is you yep. got to have, like you said, you got to plant those seeds for tomorrow because guess what? We're going to need fruit in 2026. So mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. it's good to be doing. Okay, buddy, let's move on to... All right. Rymel Tapia signing with the Boston Red Sox. We're going to be seeing him in a Red Sox uniform playing at Fenway in 2023, and it is going to be interesting. Now, he is on a minor league deal which means they will be able to stash him in AAA if that is something that they would like to do. Right now, Tapia was our Randall Grishik last year. Was he adequate? I guess as a fourth outfielder. I mean, he was below average in almost every category. OPS plus, batting average, on base percentage slugging percentage literally slightly below average just in every aspect one thing he did very well was was run right he was a speedy dude Mm -hmm. we'll all remember that inside the park home run he hit (laughs) against boston Boston. off jaron duran who just watched it fall and then didn't even bother running for it which is still probably the weirdest most fun play of all of 2022 for blue jays fans right that red sox blue jays game the 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 jays went 16 and 3 against the red sox in 2022 the whole reason they were in the playoffs was literally how much they dominated the red sox so it is going to be interesting to see how that plays out that rivalry plays out in 2023 uh all the best to rymel tapia 
Uh, do you know how much money he got? My get, I don't know I'm exactly what his right deal now. was. Uh, one know. year, one point nine five million. Okay. Um, is that correct? What am I looking at here? Sorry, just bear with me here, guys, for a moment. No problem. I th- I think we all remember um, his costly mistake in the outfield in the wild card game, and this wasn't an isolated incident, although it was a big incident in a big moment, and so that one hurt. And obviously, I'm not blaming Rymel Tapia for that collapse. There's plenty of blame to go around for that wild card game too, and we don't need to talk about it and bring up the pain and hurt that. Uh, Okay, so is that okay. why the Blue Jays didn't bring him back? Because I we think do get so, man. a lot of questions about this uh, with all the money we've spent and the guys we've got. And here we are talking about fourth outfielders and who are we going to use as a, as a fourth outfielder this year. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, Duvall's out there, Grossman's out there, Ramel Tapia is the name that uh, a lot of Blue Jays fans are going, well, why don't we just bring him back? Right, and when we were talking well, to Ben Nicholson Lucas... Smith, the example was, or the the reasoning was, these guys who are trying to build their value for their next contract, right, on a one year deal, are looking at Toronto right now and, and going, "Where's my path to 450 at bats?" They don't see mm-hmm. it, right? They're saying, mm-hmm. "Am I really going to reestablish myself or build my value uh, going into next free agency with a 200 at bat season?" Right. Um, so I'm just, a, I guess it? I'm a little surprised with Raymond Tapia going to Boston on specifically a minor league deal, like if that's the case. Um, My guess is he looks at that Red Sox team and he thinks to himself, I fit in as a fourth outfielder in Boston far better than in Toronto. I'm going to see more playing time. Another reason I think is that the Toronto Blue Jays look at Nathan Lucas, who's on their 40 man roster, played really well in AAA last year, lefty bat. And they probably feel that it's a, a sideways move. So why go out and, and spend $2 million on Rymel Tapia when Nathan Lukes can do the same job for 750000 the league minimum? So I think it just breaks down to looking at the analytics, looking at it, both stats, projecting where these guys will, will wind up in 2023 and saving yourself $1.2 million. I guess when you're a competitive balance tax team, you do need to uh, make those decisions on the margins here and there, don't you? I would agree. Okay, Anything let's else to add on Rymel. No, not at all. Let's uh, move on to your fun story of the day. So this is a story that I was not going to tell on the podcast. Um, it's a little bit embarrassing, but heck, I'm heading off for a month. What the hell, eh? Let's. By do the it. time you're back. We will have forgotten. Exactly. That's the, that's the hope. Okay. So, and wait till your legal age. There you go. That's the, uh, there you go. That's the lesson here. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for following along with the walk off. Honestly, this community continues to grow. It continues to blow my mind. The quality of guests we've been getting, the, the network we have built is just completely mind blowing to me. And it's all because of you. So thank you so very much to every single person out there who has ever listened or liked or commented all the best over the next month. I am going to be back February 16th and I look really forward to, to being back on the show. Don't worry though. Adam's got, the the ship wheel here and it's under good control and of course sinking but we're going down with the captain here so yeah exactly garth and craig are going to uh help us out and fill in some spots for us all right everybody take care hopefully i can see you on mailbag a little bit while i'm in africa and if not all the best we'll see you soon cheers